Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and today I have this cool script I found from Scan. It allows you to peek at a lot of the properties on a given file on your computer, on your Windows computer. And granted, it's using AutoHotKey. I'm going to jump into the code here in a minute. If you would, please like or comment on the video or subscribe to my channel. It'd be awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into the script. First, I'm going to show you the function. So let's jump over here. Uh, oh, and also you can get the script from that, that URL that was above my head, obviously, in every file that we cover today. Here, this is the function. Now I've added a couple things from the, the original post. This is the URL to the original post. What I've added is a few things, and I've changed a couple things in the structure here. Later in here, now it's an optional parameter. This kind, as you see, is a, one of the parameters that's optional. And he had mentioned, I think, like two, music and maybe program or use music and image or something. But I went and found this URL that gives you the list of co different kinds. And these are the kinds. So there's document, feed, folder, game, link, movie, music, blah, 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 right? The, actually, communications, this was nested. I didn't test this to see if you would list this. And then that, I think you would just list these. Uh, like email or whatever. And again, it's optional. So, you know, I think he left it out for the most part, but you might want to use it, especially if you want to iterate over certain types of files, you could use it in the function. And so I think in one of his examples, it, it gives an example of that. We're going to show his examples, some of which are crazy powerful and, and beyond my understandings. And then my example, right, I did some work with it. Uh, the other thing I want to show you here is this is the list of properties. Now, You'll notice my file is very, 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 very wide, and that's because these are the different, this, it's a common limited list of 1,317, if I remember right, yeah, right here. So there's 1,317 items that you can return back, right? Now, they're only going to be valid for certain types of file types, right? So not everything is always going to have one of these values, but this is the full list that he had worked through. He brute forced it, apparently, and you can see some of them, right? There's Some of them are system type things, which is very clear, it's probably for system files. Uh, and then there's stuff for audio. I remember seeing some stuff about audio. Uh, there's probably a lot of system stuff in here. The photo I saw. So anyway, you get the idea, right? We're gonna touch on a few of these and show how you can use this really cool function. It's not a large function, but it is nested. If this is one of the things when you start learning how to use objects, it's a very powerful. So let's look at Scan's examples, and I'm not in any way knocking Scan. He does amazing jobs and shares some great stuff. However, to me, this very first example, like I can't, and I've asked several people, they, they couldn't quite grasp either of what's going on here. Unfortunately, he didn't uh, annotate. Uh, and I, what I've done is I've put in a, a, this is my hotkey for launching it. Make sure if it's not in your library. Now, I put it in my library, but I, I wanted to include it here just so you would see. If you don't have it in your library, include the path to the function. And here, this is example one. He's taking the FileX Pro function. And using, this is just an example. This, this is the AHK path. And then... This is one parameter getting the system file FRN, right? Now, he doesn't mention what this is. And then he's getting the, the serial using substring on this. And then he uses the format command. And this is where it's like, okay, I think this is like the first eight bits. And then this dash is, you'll see it in what gets returned. And then there's this part that he's applying some sort of formatting to... This is where his he's using the object, the system file FRN, right? That's where he's accessing it. Here he stores it. Here he's accessing it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch this and run it. And we'll see it's this crazy thing, which I guess is the file ID. I don't know. I've never heard of this. Again, uh, to me, this is, this is pretty advanced. And to have it as your first example, again, I'm not knocking you, Scan. You're doing a great job. Uh, but... I would start off a little slower uh, for, for us mere humans that don't understand this stuff. But anyway, this, this was cool. Now, I'm going to comment this out, and let's comment these out, just so we can go to the next one. Now, here, this is where it starts getting kind of cool, right? Because if you had looked in the initial, let's jump back to it here, FileX Pro, you'll see this P asterisk, right? That's a variadic parameter, which means you can put in multiple of what you're doing. So I do like, in his example here, he listed this out. Now we're using the FileX Pro function, shoving it all into an object. Well, a variable, right, but it's it's going to return an object, so he's putting it called OBJ. This is the path to the file, and he's smartly done it this way, so no matter what kind of, you know, wherever Windows is installed, it'll get this chimes.wav file. And notice it's system.audio, and these are, this is a list of where he could have, 
you know, put them all, flattened it, and done it this way. You know, for best practices, I think it's not like that. He wanted to have it on the forum where it's easy to read. So I get that, whatever, you know, however you prefer. And since it's his stuff, I'm not knocking that. Uh, and it's going to go and get, it's going to pass this list of attributes as parameters to his filex pro function and it's going to return them back now in his example he just shows the one this obj system audio dot encode bit rate this is the value that came back for that one right however uh, through using maestrius um, object to string function and i'm also dumping it uh, into this debug window is this window here in studio right so this is this now is going to show us oh i should have put that after but it doesn't matter so here are those different values and and uh one of which will have been that one that we had looked at All right so let me move this up so here we go so you can see each of these things are in there right um i think this is the one the sample rate is that what we had displayed Let's see no audio encoding encoding bit rate audio encoding okay this is oh that's right 14 thousand uh whatever number that is so this all got shoved into that object and this is predominantly how i use objects right it's just to store data structured data it's great because then you could access it just like he did here technically i think he could have done obj dot and then well no because that has these dots this is where it can be confusing with dot notation uh this is in a in double quotes and so it's actually a string it's not dot notation if i if i'm correct i, I believe let's go ahead and test that uh message box percent and i'm going to copy all of this just so i'm lazy i'm going to say dot and get rid of that now right now this should come up to in my opinion come up like and it did it came up blank that's because these dots aren't actually like a dot notation object they're part of a string in that case and that's that can be very confusing when you're not uh, when you're new to this and not expecting it so in this case he is doing the appropriate way of doing this is throwing it between the double quotes uh, but what i wanted to demonstrate was and let's move this after there we go so now when i run it we'll see that this number and notice that's this number right here but you have all of these in one very quick call we looked up all of these different parameters for this one file and shoved it into an object and then we could have access to it we could display it how we want what i like about this object as well or the function that returns it as an object is it has a very informative this is the key and then the value right so the key is very descriptive of what you're getting and the value right so he's using this as the the key to store it which is really really helpful when you're coming back with a lot of options so again i'm going to comment out now i'll try to remember to go and revert this back to where this is not all commented out in the file that i upload and we'll get rid of that and let's return now it's going to since those are all everything up here is commented out right it's going to go down to this third one now this third one is a little more advanced but i really i do love that he gave a couple different examples i just wish like this was Early, I would have even started with a baby step, a very simple one, and then jump into this, this, and then the first one should have been last, in my opinion, whatever. Um, here, he's taking these parameters and putting them into an array. So, let me add that. Or in an array. And then, he loops over files where the AHK path is. Uh, and so we're going to loop over that. And notice here, he's actually passing a parameter under the kind function. And this props, this is interesting, is he, it's the array, and he leaves in this, this asterisk, and that passes it, it's going to take each one of these into it, and it, when it iterates over them, it's going to get these values. So let's go ahead and launch this and run it. So this is the first file, file description, oh, here's the path. So that's for the AutoHockey EXE, and then there's each one of these values, and now for the AutoHockey a32 exe so maybe because this says program is probably for each one of the executables is my guess so each one of these is going to go get those values i think that's pretty pretty neat this was his other example i think that's spot on awesome again you'd have to study objects and understand what he's doing here now i borrowed from this and made my own let's jump into my example now what i did here's the include right 
I created a properties.txt file and it has, let me open this folder and let me bring this over so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna double click on this and notice each one of those 1,317 values is on a, its own line, right? So each one of these things, because what, what happens is I tried including all of this at one time and it was it said, you know, the continuation section is too long, you can't do with it. So what I decided to do was to read this file in as a variable. And so if we do, I'm gonna put a pause here. Oh, we'll see now here in studio this is that file we just read in right it's just showing you hey we read all that into the variable params right and that's all i'm doing here so let me comment those two out and then i create an array called par and i'm looping over this params variable and i'm splitting basically on new lines right and so each time it goes over it I push that value, the, the param, which is this, that's the key, this is your key, this is your value. I push that into an object, right, par, and I had to declare that here first, otherwise I'm pretty sure it doesn't work, and it's an array, and it's going to shove them all in there, and now let's see here, if I relaunch this, notice here, I'm just showing you the array, right, That this is the message box right here, great, it, it's basically a pause. And here you can see we're starting at the first one and it scrolls down and this this is the key value pair, right? The 55th item was this thing. So you get an idea here. I shoved so quickly all 1,317 of those items into an array, right? So that's all this was doing. So let me get comment these two out, Let's save that. Now, then what I do is just like scanned in the other one, I pass that array here to the object and I'm, I'm giving it, I'm actually right in this case, using the same file as he did in his example, if I remember right, because I was borrowing from it. Uh, and then what I said was, hey, I could have shown all of this, but there'll be 1,317, but look at this. Oh, actually, all of these will have it. Do DMP. Now, um, you got to use the object of stream because we're going to peek inside of an object, right? So when I save this, reload it, and run it, you're going to notice... Now, this one took a while because now it's iterating over 1,317 things. Some of these, they have long continuation sections. But see how this says equals nothing, equals nothing, equals nothing. For a lot of the values, we still have, now we have 1,903. But that's because when we scroll up, you'll see there's some weirdness. See all these lines? I didn't dig into it to see what that was. But you get the idea, right, that there's a lot of values in here. Depending on the file you're looking at, that it may or may not have certain values. And so... Right now, there's just a lot of crap here that's empty. And so I kind of wanted to do, I think what Scan did in his example, but I created an object, has value, just to give it a, a nice intuitive name. And I said, for, hey, let's iterate over this object, which is from up here. Let me get rid of this too. And uh, hey, if, if there is a value, right? Because if there's no value, it's just going to skip over it. If it has a value, I'm going to shove into the key, which is going to be the same from up here, right? That's going to be the key. I'm going to shove in the value for it. And then we're going to show that down here, back using the Explorer object, has value in this. So this time, instead of having this crazy long list, it's going to be much shorter. I still get the errors, and I could probably build something, but that's inside of the function, so I didn't want to do that. But here, now, notice we have... 706 lines now see there's still a bunch here that we you know i'm not sure what's going on with that but for this purpose it's good enough right but notice there's a value on each one of these things so this is kind of a way for me to prune through the list to see hey for this one file these are the values that are available and it's a crazy amount of stuff so if you were trying to look at you know find something about a specific file this might be a great way for you to look at those attributes pin down the one you want and then of course once you get the ones you want only call those right so i and again i think this is a really really cool functionality and yeah i hope that helps hope you enjoyed that please comment below if you get stuck on something or you know if you have a better way for doing this kind of stuff uh, i'd love to hear about it thank you have a good day